I'm a Sydney-based artist and part of my art practice is working with concrete as a system for growing native plants. I've always been interested in plants. They've been resonant with me um, since I was a kid and I've always cultivated them in some kind of way and uh, observed them. When I started to make the sculptural concrete works, it came out of a desire to capture um, a sense of place. I, went to Kaosok National Park, which is um, a flooded jungle valley, and it has these really amazing natural rock formations in a man-made environment, essentially. Straight from Kaosok, I went to Phuket, I was in a tuk-tuk, and uh, I saw a small concrete column in someone's backyard, and this column um, was only about knee height, but it was basically the stub of a column uh, two uh, verticals of reinforcement, ru rusted rebar, and um, a floating element. So all the concrete in the middle had blown away. Um, so uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty amazing. And then I read an article um, around plant intelligence, um, and I think that really stitched everything together. Uh, it talked a lot about the connectivity between plants, between plants and animals, the way that, that, that plants communicate and um, might have some level of intelligence uh, around what they do and how they interact with the environment. So all of these things seem to come together at one particular point. Uh, and I did have a vision around, uh, you know, I, I guess a nascent form of rock melt um, so this is the perfect opportunity to really realise that. Slag is a byproduct of making steel, so when they smelt the iron ore, um, you have the iron component of of iron ore, which, which is the objective, and then there is the waste material, which is mostly metal oxides and uh, I think silicon dioxide. And it's quite like lava. Yeah, it appeals to me because it's a man-made volcanic. The endeavor is to capture the form in that pouring process. There is, there's not a great deal that you can do post that process because you, use, you lose that slippage between um, something that's um, man-made and something that's natural if, if you um, chip, chip away at it too much. I find the first works that I make in a series always inform the works that come after it. I started to see the sculptures that I was making as perhaps um, kind of uh, a terraforming in miniature. I'm taking man-made materials and I'm um, shaping them so they're habitable for um, plant life. I had been thinking about this work in some form or another since early uh, 2014. Um, and I had attempted to make it previously, um, but it was just too tricky. So um, this was an opportunity to, to flesh out those ideas. I guess it was about seeing the verticality of this space, the light centred, you know, at the, at the top of the, the courtyard, um, the massive concrete columns behind that are kind of turned on an angle, that they were the strong considerations, also the floor being um, divided into a grid. Um, so yeah, I wanted to fit. Within that, I wanted the work to stand by itself, but I wanted to acknowledge all of those, those features and to, to fit within that and uh, to make it um, at, at a scale that does it justice, I think. <laughs>